Jesus is getting married. I'm in Oaxaca. I've been awake for 48 hours, but when you've got energy like this, this late at night, I think uh, it's gonna be pretty damn hard to fall asleep. I'm here to eat, solely to eat. Oaxaca's gonna be the inspiration this time. More to come. This place is heaving. Literally marching to the beat of its own drum. Let's excel with our love. This place is like a burst of confetti over an arid desert landscape. Let's talk about extracting the most amount of fun from what you've got. Alright, so that one there. That one there is uh, crickets. So I'm about to eat a uh, bug taco. Or just a bite of it. It was good. You wouldn't know it was bugged. Oh, now you can. <laughs> I mentioned last night that Oaxaca seems like a burst of confetti over a dry desert landscape. They extract so much fun out of what should be so little. Whether they do it with a lick of colour, or an injection of mezcal, or a rush of caffeine, there's so much to be done. And it feels so complete. Eating a lot of the food, I realised that I'm not here to cook. This is the eye-opener. I'm here to eat. Let me explain. So, the explanation for it is we're flipping the Airbnb script. I'll be expanding my arsenal of ingredients and knowledge here in Oaxaca and then let the ingredients guide me once I travel up north to the next Airbnb. We worked our way from dish to dish, drink to drink, mole to mole, serenaded all the way through our Oaxacan food journey. Laden with food, we took to the streets and their markets, and we found ourselves at Oaxaca's Cactus Museum, where we explored an alien-esque world of cactuses and desertous plants amidst a rapidly retreating sun. So in between setting up the last shot and this shot, we're going to a tequila distillery. It's jamming things in pretty tight, so enough talk, more exploring. So that's the raw material. Those things are about eight years old. So there's the first immediate difficulty in doing this. Now the other problem is, is you've got this wood here, and that's all oak. 
and that oak needs to be burned in this pit. And it gets covered with scoria, and those get heated up until they're white hot, and then the raw material goes on top and roasts over five days. But five days isn't the longest time here. The longest time is the eight years, or however long it takes oak to, oak to grow. So in, in a way, that's incredibly intensive and incredibly taxing on the land. So apparently they've got uh, reforestation programs underway to develop a bit more of this uh, raw material that they need, but as far as sustaining it goes, that's uh, pretty damn difficult. I'm gonna go have a look at the distilling process now. Post roasting, this bloody great wheel comes through with a donkey attached to it, crushes all of the material and then ends up in these barrels. <laughs> what, cooked together? Yeah. Okay. It's high in fructose. Okay. Really high in fructose. So what? That's so good. <laughs> so post-roasting, that uh, meat we just ate was very caramelized. It comes from this part here. So very, very sweet. You can see where the sugars come from to get that alcohol up. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then a little water. Because it's just started. Yeah. This water's gonna be boiling hot because it's just started, right? So yeah. as the vapor condenses, it gets pushed through into the serpentine. Yes, but that is going to heat up anyway. Oh uh -huh. and put your little hand in here. So this is the top of it, this is the heads. So it's sixty. 60. Yeah, 60 plus. Far out. That's intensely strong. <laughs> God damn it, man. Okay, so condenses over. So it heats up down there. Yeah. Condenses, goes along the pipe, cools down slowly. But you see the, you see the, yeah. the serpentine in there? Yeah. So that's the coils. So as the vapor gets pushed through mm -hmm. into the cool bath, and yep. it recondenses and pushes out its liquid. So what? Uh, okay. So the liquid. How do they bring it back down to forty percent or a tolerable strength? <laughs> they they can either cut it and they can add the other part, which is lower. So it starts high. Yeah. And it comes lower because alcohol boils at two hundred and twelve degrees. Yep. So alcohol is one seventy six. Yep. And water is two twelve. Okay. So that's why. It's, in distillation, you always get alcohol first. So this, the fruits of all of that labor. Where do you guys bottle it? I haven't had breakfast yet. <laughs> So this is an example of marketing genius. To promote our town, we're going to put a still right up into the entrance of it. <laughs> oh man, my government would have a fit if anyone tried to do that.
Mercado Benito Juarez market in Oaxaca and I just bought bugs. This place is going off. Welcome to Mercado Benito Juarez. We've got everything. You want some toys with your offal? We've got it. You want some bags with your bananas? You can count on us. You want some hamsters with your melons? You've got us pegged. You want a sombrero with your chicken? We've got everything. No, but really, this place was crazy, exciting, slightly anxiety-inducing mess that I'd happily go visit again. This is what we travel for. But hangover, free and fun, a different devil was brewing. You see, the night before, around 3 a.m., this guy, Grant, decided that we should go out and get the best roadside burgers he knew about in Oaxaca. And I need you to hold on to that bit of information for a little while. After the markets, we went for lunch, where I indulged in more bugs. First breakfast, enormous breakfast, and now this enormous lunch. I've got the chews. Chews are when you just chew and chew and chew and chew and you just can't bring yourself to swallow. So after that, we had to be at the airport. So our Airbnb host graciously organized for us to take a taxi to the airport. But on the way, we'd stop off at Mount Alban. It's like an ancient ruin and it is absolutely beautiful. So we loaded all our stuff into the taxi and drove up there. And when on the way up, the taxi driver and I spoke famously together, like we were old friends. We didn't really make much eye contact because I was busy filming roadside uh, generic bits of footage. But when we got up there, we left our bags with him. He said he'd be back in three hours to pick us up. And so we explored this ancient wonder. Two and a half thousand odd years old. Up a mountain with limited tools and technology. Unbelievable. <laughs> it's hard to really know what to photograph. It's majesty and so enormous. What am I actually meant to show you? I don't have a lens wide enough. A camera doesn't really do it justice. You just have to visit. Finished. We were five minutes early. So we jumped into the taxi and headed to the airport. Again, we spoke like old friends, but it was a little quieter this time. I don't know if he was tired or I'm not sure. So this guy, this taxi driver must have a goddamn doppelganger. Got in the wrong taxi. All the way to the airport and no bags because it wasn't the same taxi driver. <laughs> so now, coming down to the wire, I'm just gonna blame it on heat stroke. Yeah. That's right. We'd gotten into the wrong taxi. Could have sworn it was the same guy. He just looked a little bit more clean shaven this time. But thanks to Ines's quick thinking, we managed to call the Airbnb. She answered, and the guy drove us out our bags. We weren't having a repeat of Rome. And we made the flight, but not before Montezuma's revenge kicked in. So that's just a little framework for any perceived lack of energy you might notice in Guanajuato. So after those two torturous flights, we got to stay in a Holiday Inn. And to that Holiday Inn, I am truly, truly sorry. See you next episode.